Hello, I'm Scott Cornwall, and today I'm going to show you how to do a curl ombre effect with pinup perm. So what this will create is a nice natural cascading curl in an ombre effect that's permanent. So you can just wash your hair and leave it to dry naturally and get this really contemporary tousled curly look. So firstly, what we want to do is clarify the hair. So what we've done now is we've clarified the hair. It's really important to clarify hair before you perm because you don't want any surface barriers on there that are going to prevent that chemical from going inside the hair and changing it. So if you're used to using a lot of heavy conditioners or styling products, maybe about seven days before you plan to do the perm, just start using those products on your hair to cleanse. Today I've used the Pinup Clarifying Shampoo, but you can also use Baby Shampoo for this purpose as well. So with Amy's hair, she's got some highlights in there. So if you're gonna perm hair with highlights or quite a lot of coloring, what you're gonna to need to use is the Pinup Pre-Perm Spray, because what this does is it goes into the hair and it fills it. So you'll get a nice even curl. So may again, maybe about one week prior to the perm, start clarifying the hair and using the Pinup Pre-Perm Treatment and just working that through the hair and using it as a leave-in conditioner. And then on the day of the perm, after you've clarified, again, just work that through the hair and you can also wind with this. So with Curl Ombre, the key is to wind the hair on bunches that start about here. So all this hair is left unpermed. What you need to do is select your rods based on the type of curl result you want to achieve. So today what I'm going to be using is the medium size perm rod because what that will do is it will give a nice regular size curl that's neither too loose or too tight. However, if you have particularly naturally curly hair, another method that you can do is perm on these large jumbo rods. And what this will do is it will actually relax your hair and create a nice uniform curl. These rods are also good if you just want a slight ripple and a beachy texture in the hair without a definite curl. The last rod size is the small one. This particular rod will create a real strong curl and it's actually particularly good as a style foundation. So whilst you might not want to wash and wear the finished perm look, you can actually set the hair on rollers and because it's got this strong perm structure in it and is actually very curly underneath, you will end up with a nice strong set curl that will last between washes even if you go a week. So we're going to go on to the bunches stage now. Now onto the creation of the bunches. Regardless of whether your hair falls on the side or through the middle, always section your bunches for this ombre effect in the middle because you want the curl even all the way around. If you flip it over, it's going to look quite natural anyway, but don't set the bunch on the side. So it's just like creating regular bunches in the hair. What you need to do is to make sure you have your starting point for the curl. So you go all the way along the back as you would with regular bunches, and you throw one half of the hair this way and the other half that way. You comb the hair smooth, got a fringe area like this don't worry about it because that's not going to have the perm treatment applied to it anyway. So you comb the hair very smooth underneath as well. So you can actually allow that little bit to fall out there because we don't want to put a curl into that part. And then using a fabric hair scrunchie you set your first bunch at the ear. Now the fabric hair scrunchies are the best to use because they're very soft on the hair and they're not going to create a ridge during the process so you're not going to see a really obvious gap from the top to the bottom and they're covered in cling film so that lotion doesn't get through. So once you've created that bunch you comb this hair smooth. This hair here is the hair that will be permed. 
and you do exactly the same thing on the other side. And again, you go to the ear like this. So those are your two ombre bunches. So we move on to the next section, which is protecting those stems. It's really important to cover these bunches with some cling film. The reason you do this is because you don't want the lotion going into the fabric of the scrunchie and then creating a small ridge around that area. If it does, it's not a big deal because it's not hugely noticeable, but ultimately you want a really nice seamless blend between the top and the curly section. So all you do is you just roll that cling film around and squeeze it in, and that's now completely protected. And then we do exactly the same on the other side by rolling your cling film in a line like that and just taking it creating a roll around the outside of the bunch. Now with those bunches in place, what we're going to do is start our wind. So using water, if you've got just regular colour treated hair or normal hair, or using pre-perm spray, if you've got highlights or delicate hair, just dampen that section down, comb it through, and then taking a tail comb, split the section across at the bottom like this, and take this top section to the top and pin it out of the way. Now you can see here, this piece of hair is from the fringe and layer section. That's fine, you just smooth that in and that will create a curl just in the end that blends in and around. This is your first section, so you comb smooth. You must always wind perms on damp hair. It's really important to always wind a perm on damp hair because the elasticity in the hair will stretch. So when you wind that perm rod around, the elasticity will stretch and the bonds will move into place and they will start to form the new curl pattern from when the lotion goes on. So you next take your end paper and you wrap that end paper over the ends like this and move it all the way down to the bottom. The end paper does two things, it protects the ends from the process and it also gives you a good starting point to begin winding. So here we're using medium sized rods and we're going to wind in a spiral. So imagine you've got a curling tong and just begin winding the hair from the bottom all the way around and up to the top like this and with good tension make sure you have good tension and the hair isn't loose because you want that tension in the wind and then you secure it like that and that is the first curl sort of hanging loosely from the braid like that next we're going to go on to the section directly above so just separate that here and you'll notice at this point the bunch starts to become a bit wider. So again you pull that and section it across like that and pin it to the top and then here you've got your bottom section which is a bit wider. Now at this point you want to start splitting this curl. So you split it across like this in the middle and then we're going to wind this section here. Exactly the same as the first with a medium sized rod and good tension. So a little tip is if you find that this hair is starting to come out, just spray with a little water or pre-perm treatment and smooth it into the hair like that. And then take your rod and begin winding from the bottom in a corkscrew curl like you would on a curling rod with good tension that's separated, you just push it in like that and wind it and keep pulling it, feel it pulling a 
against your bunch. And that's your next one. And there it falls. And then with your third one, directly next to it, you do exactly the same thing. You put the end paper in, wind with tension, and secure, and go up the bunch in this way. And that's how I'm going to wind both this bunch and that bunch. Now we've wound both sets of bunches. So there are 10 rods in each side. Both sides have been wound in a spiral formation all the way up to the stem of the bunch. So the next stage we're going to move on to is the applying of the waving lotion, which is the crucial step that's going to create the curl pattern in the hair that will eventually become permanent. So take your waving lotion, part one, and you want to unscrew that cap and pour this into a plastic or glass bowl. Don't pour it into a metal bowl or anything metallic because the lotion will react with it. Start by pouring a small amount into the bowl. You'll immediately notice that the lotion smells. It has a sulfur smell, but that smell is what is going to create the curl in the hair. Taking your sponge, saturate the sponge in the lotion, allow the drips to come off and then move it onto the hair. Take your sponge with your lotion on it and you fold two pieces of kitchen roll and put them underneath the bunch, bunches here. And what this will do is stop any drips from getting onto the ears or around the neck. And with the lotion on the sponge and a folded up piece of kitchen roll, you start on the bottom roller you hold the kitchen roll underneath it and you begin just gently squeezing that lotion onto the roller, making sure it's saturated but not dripping huge amounts. And then you just dip your sponge back into the lotion and move your kitchen roll onto the next one and dab that along like this. And you'll see that foam starting to appear. And again, you'll notice the smell. What's happening at this stage is that the lotion is going inside the hair and it's breaking the bonds into the curl pattern that you've created around this roller. So it's softening the hair. So the application of the lotion is really crucial and that smell that you can smell is really crucial because it's that smell that's producing your curl that you're later gonna set and make permanent. So just carefully go over each section like that until they're all covered and then move on and do this bunch as well. So now you've applied the lotion on both sides and double check that each of the rods has been covered. You don't want to miss any out because you won't get a curl there otherwise. Once you've covered both of those rods you want to remove this kitchen roll and you can replace with new if you want to, or you can just make sure that you wipe any areas where you think the lotion has gone with just some cotton wool or with some uh, warm water. Now, the next stage you want to do is wrap these bunches in cling film like this. What this cling film is going to do is hold the heat next to the rod and it's heat and warmth that makes that waving lotion develop evenly and create a good curl. So just secure the cling film around the rods like that and we're going to move on to the processing. So if you have normal or resistant hair, develop for 30 to 40 minutes. If you have regular hair, 30 minutes. For colour treated hair, 10 to 20 minutes. And if you have highlighted hair, develop for the first five minutes and then give a test curl every three minutes thereafter. On highlighted hair, do not exceed 20 minutes. Test curling is really important to demonstrate the curl's curling phase. To conduct a test curl, pull the cling film back, unfasten a rod, ideally at the top section of the head, and gently unwind round about 50% of the rolled section. 
Push the section towards the head and check for ribboning and an S-bend. Processed hair will demonstrate a new curl pattern and a strong S-bend. If you can't see this curl pattern in the hair, gently wind back the perm rod and replace the cling film. Wait a few more minutes and test curl again. If you have highlighted or sensitive hair, you should test curl every five minutes, checking for that curl pattern to appear. So the hair was rinsed um, for 5 to 10 minutes depending on the length. With Amy's hair, because it's quite long quite thick, we gave it a good rinse between about 7 minutes long. But it's really important you rinse all these bunches out, take the cling film away, rinse through that as well, and then at the end just run the shower across the head. Never use boiling hot water as I said, because you don't want that to over process the waving lotion as it's leaving the hair. Afterwards. We left Amy's hair for about 45 minutes and it's, it's important to do that because if you go straight on to neutralising after you've rinsed off the waving lotion, the hair will have absorbed quite a lot of water and it will basically dilute the neutraliser and it won't be able to tack the bonds together as effectively. So when you leave the hair to air dry, you can do it for anywhere between half an hour to even a couple of hours if you want, there's no rush as long as you don't take these rollers out. Don't take the rods out, that's the most important thing, just leave them in place. So now we're going to move on to neutralising. What the neutraliser does is it oxidises the hair. So the first lotion, the waving lotion, broke the bond in the hair and created the curl pattern that's in there. This stage is now going to make it permanent. So the neutraliser is going to go onto the hair and it's going to start tacking the bonds back into place in the new shape. So what you want to do is take your part two bottle your neutraliser and remove the lid or the cap and apply the applicator foaming nozzle. So you just just screw that back on like that, make sure it's tight and then you shake the bottle to create the foam. And then taking your kitchen roll again and starting at the bottom section place your kitchen roll under the rod and you begin applying the foam and you'll see that come out and it will go along the rod like this and you just gently work that in with your thumb like that and just scrunch it in so you go along the rod like this creating that foam and working it in the other method that you can do is you can actually pour this into the plastic bowl and scrunch it with your sponge that you used as long as you cleaned it after the waving lotion and then you apply it. So with the sponge apply a bit of clarifying shampoo, clean it, rinse it with hot water and then you can use it for neutralising. And I'll do that stage next when I take the rods out. So it's been five minutes now since I put the neutraliser over the rods and what we can do now is start removing the perming rods. So just gently unwind the rod like that and let the curl fall. So it's important, the perm has still not finished yet so you don't want to yank this hair, you just want to unwind it or roll it like you would if you were releasing a curl from a curling tong or a heated roller. So we've removed all the rods and now it's time to take the hair bands out. 
with the hair bands, um, it's always worth you using maybe older ones because if you find your hair is getting tangled up in them, don't try and unpick it or spend ages doing it. Just pull the band out and cut it and release it. Um, just make sure none of your hair's in the way. So you just try as delicately as you can to pull that hair through the band because the hair's still in process. And then you release it like this. And then you do this side as well. So now, pour some of your neutralizer into your bowl with your clean sponge, foam the neutralizer up, and we want to work all of this neutralizer through the hair to carry on fixing those bonds back in. Now, even though you've not had the lotion up the top here, you still want to put the neutralizer on there because it's been through the rinsing process and it may have had some of the lotion touch it. So you just need to scrunch it in and work it through the hair. But pay particular attention to these bottom sections here because this is where your new curl has been added. So you go around and do that and leave that for a further three or four minutes. And this is our finished result. So the neutralizer was rinsed off, and then what we did was we actually blow dried this hair at the front that hadn't been had the perm treatment on it. But everything else you can see is the curl on braid perm. So all we did was we took sections and just scrunched and twisted them, and you can put a small amount of oil or something like that on there just to define it. But that is the actual look of the curl on braid perm. So this is now 100% permanent and it will grow out, there's no line or anything where the, the bands were. Some things you need to remember about when you perm your hair. You can't wash the hair for two to three days afterwards because the hair is still setting in the new permanent shape. So if you think you might want to wash the hair, um, try and use some dry shampoo through it on day two or day three. The hair has also effectively been really clarified by the waving lotion and by the neutralizer. So when you do wash the hair, you want to give it a good conditioning treatment as well. Um, and then the hair will feel completely normalized again. The hair there won't be damaged, there won't be an issue with it, but you do want to condition it on that sort of uh, second or third day when you wash. Don't use straightening irons on the hair for at least two to three weeks, ideally a month after you've had a perm because it will pull it out. You can set the hair on rollers and let it uh, dry naturally, um, and maybe a couple of weeks in use heated rollers on it. But really, that's all you need to do. This is a wash and wear perm, so all it needs is just to be washed in the morning, a little oil put through, and that's the result that you'll get permanently.